All right, everyone. So we had quite the, uh, we had, yeah, a really good week this week. Um, not only in the currencies and the CFDs and the indices, but also the uh, junior miners. There were some really good setups, uh, including uh, Northern Dynasty that uh, we called uh, on the chat room. Very nice setup, a uh, very nice break. And again, folks, these market structures, they keep repeating themselves in all these markets. And that is the goal just to repeat these same setups uh, over and over again. Uh, so before we look at the charts, uh, let's look at some sort of fundamental news, I guess, out there. A lot of uh, deteriorating um, economic data that's been coming out again. Uh, not surprising if you follow uh, my blog as well. And the repo, if you remember last week, I posted a video I wanted to show you about what was going on in the repo market. And the site was down for maintenance and it was down for about three days. Of course, a lot of theories on why and maybe the Fed, you know, uh, don't want to show us what's happening anymore. However, um, yesterday uh, they were back. Uh, sorry, this week they were back. Uh, yesterday they injected about 80 billion in repo, and then today for a Valentine's Day gift it was uh, about 47.65. So uh, this is just a, a short-term uh, repo, but I just wanted to let you know that the repos are continuing. Uh, Fed Chair Powell may have put himself in um, a bit of a pickle here because he said that it would end around April uh, and I do not think that will happen another thing uh, to talk about is uh, this article that came out near the end of the uh, market close today and <laughs> White House considering tax incentive for more Americans to buy stocks uh, again folks everything and anything will be done to keep these markets propped up uh, they cannot be allowed to fall uh, not just for the president and uh, election wise but everything pretty much uh, pensions retirements um you name it a lot of uh money uh again i think you know a lot of pension money is following these um uh, or are into stocks now because they are, they can't make yield in bonds anymore and you have this mess now where stocks are the only place to go for real yield and a lot of money is going into that into the u.s stock market and if you follow my work and my blog as well on uncharted fx i've talked about why the dollar is going higher and why you have to follow the dollar uh very crucial and you know we can take a quick look at the dollar the dollar did have a really good week not soybeans but the dollar had a really good week and uh again folks just for geopolitics and for economic fundamentals um, and economics in general, really, you have to follow the dollar and what is coming. But again, this this article made me sort of laugh. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, these are the kind of things. And, you know, the market did like this news when this article did come out. We had a pop as well. So let's take a look at the calendar for next week. Um, just taking a look here. We had the RBNZ last week. And as I said, you know, a lot of U.S. data like retail sale core and the CPIX food and energy uh, were not the best uh, data. A lot of other really bad economic data uh, came out last week. Um, but let's look forward to next week and what we have uh, coming down or what's on the economic docket. Again, folks, Monday, U.S. markets are going to be closed for observation of President's Day. And when the U.S. market is closed, that's a lot of liquidity. You're not going to see much moves. So Forex, yeah, Forex will be open. So um, I, I don't recommend trading Mondays just because, as I said, not very much uh, liquidity. But again, we'll take a look at a couple of the charts, see what sort of setting up for the week ahead. Tuesday, we have uh, uh, the British unemployment rate. We have uh, ZU economics uh, sentiment for the uh, for Germany. We also have the British CPI on Wednesday, so inflation data, uh, CAD, Canadian CPI data. Um, this will be interesting. We have the uh, FOMC minutes. So this is just basically uh, what the Federal Reserve was uh, talking about in the previous uh, meeting. So it's just, you know, the uh, uh, transcripts from that. 
we have Aussie employment data. We do have the Chinese interest rate decision. Okay, wow. So this one will be very interesting given. Um, well, we also have the Australian unemployment uh, rate. So that third, uh, Wednesday will be uh, quite um an important day here uh, of course both economies are uh, linked the australian dollar generally moves on uh, chinese data due to trade but this will be very interesting will the chinese cut the data of course you know you're hearing all the coronavirus stuff and how the economy has pretty much stalled before the virus there was a lot of other uh, data coming up from china regarding the economy pretty much um you know there's bank bailouts and uh, i believe an entire chinese province just got bailed out as well but it's not really getting much attention due to the coronavirus so this will be very interesting will the uh, pboc cut rates again folks all central banks uh, will be cutting rates and are cutting rates thursday we have the ecb monetary policy uh meeting accounts and on friday let's see so it's preliminary data i don't really like to look at that uh canadian retail sales and i think that will be it uh so i think that's going to be important uh, the big data is the chinese interest rate decision on wednesday let's see if they do cut uh and you can see here that there's no no consensus yet uh you know it is the people's bank of china right so i've said this in the past but i uh you know i don't trust the economic data from china and that means i don't really trust the numbers that is coming out about the coronavirus but you know this is strictly about market so we'll stick with uh, uh the charts so some trades that we took uh this week we did take the australian new zealand dollar where is that so that was here on the daily and again folks we took it on this break here so I, i'm moving my positions because this is still a setup for next uh for this uh, upcoming week uh but again folks a nice lesson here to be learned is when you have multiple green candles and again the break was here so if you remember this is where we took the trade but if you have multiple green candles it's you know you're expecting to see a pullback we didn't even have a pattern here so we we're looking for uh well actually we had a double top uh, double bottom sorry but ideally we would have to, uh, like to have seen a pullback before going higher uh but the the main lesson really from this is to close your position when there's a big news event so this big red daily candle was because of the uh, rbnz there was the interest rate decision so again folks that's something i do the one of my criteria is i close my positions before a big news event because first a you don't know you do not know how uh or what the data print will be and then secondly you will not know how the market will actually react to that data point uh so you know good trade but because of the data that was coming out best to close before that and uh, now you know we'll look to see if we can get in because on the daily we have to still make our first um higher uh, low here which we'll probably be making here uh one interesting uh look is on the four hour where some people are saying that this is a head and shoulder right here uh do i think that's a proper head and shoulder not really just because you know a head and shoulder has to occur at the top or the bottom of a well-defined trend um you know something a bit longer like this but is this really a decent uptrend i mean you know i i, I wouldn't say so i think the daily chart looks a bit more better for a trade so what i'll do is i will be watching it primarily on the daily chart uh because the daily chart does um <clears throat> uh does have the better signal so i'll watch this on the daily chart but of course you know take a look on the four hour there but i do not think that that's a proper head and shoulder pattern uh because we want to see it in a very prolonged uh trend so that was uh you know a trade that we took last week and we're still um uh, looking forward to for uh, this week ahead uh let's do wheat quickly so wheat was also a trade that i took uh short i actually closed it for a uh, break even really because we did not get any follow through and i'm still watching this for uh entry for next week if we do break below these lows here we'll have our first confirmed uh, lower high and here this is a good sort of definition of a head and shoulder after a very nice prolonged trend so wheat is still on the watch list for next week uh the real winner was the u.s swissy so we did get in uh on this break here had the retest and again this is another good example of what i was talking about with aussie new zealand when you have multiple green candles you know the probability and the likelihood of a pullback is very high uh so you know do 
uh, account for that when you're placing your stop losses, etc. But this was a good trade. Uh, and you know, we still haven't even hit our targets, uh, but I close this for the week because I do not really want to hold positions over uh, the weekend given the macro environment we are in, but perhaps we'll get a higher low before uh, testing this uh, target zone that we have been uh, targeting for, um, well, well, since this trade idea came out. US Canadian dollar, also another trade that we took. Uh, this is the area we're watching. Again, another lesson. When you have multiple red candles like this, you should expect a pullback. So this trade, again, was, uh, uh, you know, not very much profit uh, compared to US Swiss, but it's still pretty decent. Uh, but we now are waiting for the break below these lows for the week ahead uh, for a continuation. But, you know, we've had the retest and the retest has been held. Uh, however, a retest is not confirmed until you make lower lows, right? So the lower high swing is not confirmed until we make lower lows. And that is what we are expecting here for the US Canadian dollar. And New Zealand CAD was uh, a good winner as well. And this is what we talked about head and shoulder here, had the break. We had our first swing and we we're expecting a second swing. We came back to retest the zone again. This was due to the uh, New Zealand RBNZ uh, interest rate decision, that volatility. Uh, but we still have not made our second swing, uh, which is confirmed once we break below these lows here but this was the uh target uh when we first took the trade down here anyway so we are still on target to hit the 8450 level uh, however you know if you want to re-enter it's up to you but i think there's uh, plenty of other opportunities that we should look for so what i'll do is i'm going to actually start from bottom to top we'll cover the equities uh last we'll do the u.s uh, chinese yuan here on the four hour something we've been watching but we're seeing a uh, topping pattern here and uh, you know we're not really making any new swings anymore uh, so the idea was to see a break below here and this is again key folks we wait for the breaks and the close uh, we have not seen that yet uh, so let's see if this happens uh, next week uh, maybe the people's bank of china uh, you know with their rate decisions <laughs> will do this uh, will they devalue the yuan even more by cutting rates you know that's what they'd want to do uh, but let's see what happens euro norwegian corona so this was also another trade we took um, a few uh, it was not last week but the week before um, and we were expecting a second lower high swing and we have that confirmed now on the friday with this break here so this break and close below the lows confirms a lower swing uh, lower high swing in this case and we are expecting to see continuation so this might be something i might be looking to get back into because the risk to reward i think uh using these levels here uh, is actually quite decent so this might be something the norwegian corona that i'll look into and uh, when we cover oil we will take a look at why uh the corona and probably the canadian dollar uh will get you know a nice correlation with oil and uh why we might be bullish on both of them so more canadian dollar pairs but we'll take a look uh, at oil new zealand swiss here on the four hour we are at a very important uh support slash flip zone here bit of a double bottom pattern here and we might be making our first higher low swing although i do not like the fact that you know for literally these are four hour candles so for four eight twelve sixteen twenty like two days two and a half days we just could not break uh, out of this level here uh flip zone so this is sort of telling but it's still on watch aussie swissy the same sort of thing very nice you know head and shoulder pattern here after a very nice prolonged downtrend uh but we just cannot break above here there is also a bit of a gap here uh but you know just on the uh watch list perhaps there are some better uh pairs to look at uh euro aussie and euro Z new euro new zealand um both are not really giving us a pattern yet but are very interesting zones uh the flip zone here and you know we have proper uh fake out candles here so again i've talked about how we trade long wick candles it's not the wick by itself but it's the uh the subsequent candles uh or the subsequent candle that tells us what's going to occur and what actually confirms a, a fake out candle here and we have that actually on both these pairs so it'll be interesting to watch both of them going into next week if we can create some sort of pattern maybe a head and shoulder here on the euro uh aussie playing with these levels here uh that might be better confluence for this trade so both you know at very good levels but we will monitor them uh for the week ahead 
Canadian uh, Japanese yen here on the four hour sort of a head uh, you know head and shoulder here uh, but I have this highlighted because of oil again and uh, you know we'll probably talk about oil but uh, I mean we will talk about oil but just realize that the Canadian dollar um, we are bullish on it for next week only if oil does uh, what we uh, think it's going to do uh, in fact I think on Brent crude it's already broken out but we'll cover that when we get there I think before I talk about the yen, let's look at the yen futures, uh, which is also very interesting. Very big uh, flip zone here on the daily and on the four hour. This is something I've been talking about even on the chat room. We're expecting some sort of head and shoulder pattern here. Uh, you know, the yen is, and we have a confirmed fake out here too with this long wick. Uh, but the yen is considered, you know, a, a risk off as a safe haven currency because the uh, Japanese government is stable and uh the japanese they have the highest uh one of the highest saving rates for the um, western allied nations so the yen is actually backed by savings whereas the dollar you know it is the uh, world reserve currency but you know if it wasn't it would be backed by the uh, uh the u.s army perhaps well definitely uh, definitely would be uh so you know we're not really expecting any big news out of japan any blockbuster economic news out of Japan that would make people buy the yen. Uh, generally, we're expecting the yen to be, as I said, a risk off uh, safe haven currency. So we might be seeing something over this weekend or next week, perhaps uh, news that might scare the market could be coronavirus news. Again, you know, we don't predict that. We're just telling us what these market cycles are telling, uh, showing us. Uh, so, you know, don't be surprised if we see some sort of negative data. Or negative event or news either this weekend or uh, next week sometime which might force some money into the yen and when we look at uh, some of the ind indices like the S&P and the Nasdaq they are showing a bit of a, a short setup uh, so maybe there's a confluence there with uh, the yen and uh, perhaps the markets pulling back let's call it i'm not going to say they're going to fall heavily but probably pull back uh next week of course if you follow my work there's nowhere to go for yield except the stock markets and that will keep it buoyed and you know you're seeing things like this and what the fed is doing uh all to keep uh stocks propped uh so back to the yen quickly um as i gave you that case for a bullish yen so that was yen futures uh perhaps here on the daily three setups here that look uh, really decent uh, I'll quickly cover pound yen because this is still from uh, same setup from last week. We still haven't really tested that 141 zone, but not the best looking. But I do like the Swiss yen, and you know we have our confirmed lower high here. Unfortunately, this happened on a Friday close. Uh, again, I I just do not like to take breakouts or hold positions over the weekend. Uh, so let's see how this um, um, opens on monday but probably looking for an entry around tuesday because of the low liquidity we'll probably get some really bad uh price action euro yen is the one i really like um i was gonna take a short on this uh on thursday night when i had this break uh, or thursday at 2 p.m pacific time but i just didn't want to hold this over the weekend and i thought you know what this will probably pull back before we continue lower uh so i am gonna actually still wait for a bit of a pullback perhaps on monday um before entering but this idea does look good again if we miss some you know we're not really worried because there's plenty of charts and plenty of setups out there for us i talked about aussie new zealand uh aussie uh, Aussie US dollar very interesting zone here maybe we'll create some sort of pattern here so I am watching that very big support zone that people have been watching for quite some time uh, so let's see if we get some sort of pattern here I have already talked about the US Canadian dollar on the continuation sticking with the uh, uh, yen pairs uh, there could be a double top slash head and shoulder pattern here on the US yen on the four hour. So we are watching this zone here, the 109, let's call it 60 zone for a break and possible injury. Uh, Euro US dollar, very, very interesting zone. So I've covered this actually on my trading view. This is a trade idea. Uh, we took on this sort of head and shoulder right here. I did say why it wasn't the best, but our entry was actually this red break here. And our targets were... Uh, right down here and we are about to 
touch or test that 108 20 zone and we're only nine pips away so let's say you know we're pretty much there uh so from here let's see if we get some sort of uh, uh you know setup very nice trend here you can see very well defined the lower highs and lower lows here so i'd like to see some sort of bottoming here but the euro us dollar might be something uh that we can look into in, uh, to enter for next week only if we get the pattern so this is on the watch list just because of where we are at have already talked about wheat natural gas same same uh, trade idea trade setup from next week let's see if we can get a retest here and create some sort of head and shoulder here but natural gas has been getting killed uh, recently and perhaps to the best trade for next week it will be oil uh, we have covered this on the week before and this is why we are patient we talked about you know is this going to be a, a daily swing be, but it was already extended the trade was already extended we had multiple swings here on the daily and uh, again the swing is only confirmed once you break between uh, and make new lower lows so you know this was not a confirmed retest because we did not break below these lows here and on the four hour we are getting a very nice setup here double bottom and uh you know a nice higher low setup here and we just have not had that nice break yet above let's call it the 52 sort of 20 25 zone here we're expecting that for next week so this is uh what we are watching but we have patiently watched this all week and we just did not get the trigger uh so this is you know again probably the best setup along with the canadian dollar and the yen and perhaps some of the indices uh telling us uh, what's going to happen next week brent crude actually has had that breakout uh you know some may argue you'd want to get a better close above this wick here but i think this breakout uh is quite strong quite valid we can even use a line chart here and you know if we we're going to be very picky our level would be somewhere down here so we even had that breakout and that retest there so i do like uh where oil is going next week and again folks this is a nice uh these are trades and uh, we expect oil uh, to go up perhaps 59 or the even up to the 60 dollar zone here uh, so very nice setup again these markets just move in the same ways here and that's all our job is to look for these patterns to keep repeating themselves and then follow our rules and take the entries uh, when they are triggered copper again you know we talked about this for some time maybe a very dirty cup and handle pattern here but it's still on our watch list maybe not the best uh, quickly on the asian markets uh, and it will sort of reflect what we see on the s p and the nasdaq but perhaps uh, a topping pattern here where we're losing steam you know we're making higher lows higher highs higher lows higher highs and here we try to make a higher low but price reversed and you know we might be ha having a double uh, top here even on the uh, china 50 as well but this is uh, something i even posted in the uh, group chat uh, this morning about the uh, japanese nikkei very important sort of a level resistance zone we didn't really test it but we have a sort of a double uh, top here uh, and we did have a nice break however i wouldn't say this is like the best type of trend we like to look for we'd like to have more multiple swings but sort of interesting let's see how this opens next week if we go back have a retest before uh going lower i think the japanese yen sorry not the japanese yen the nikkei uh might be interesting to watch uh for the week ahead and let's quickly look at some of the indices here for the s p the nasdaq and the dow jones i do like the s p uh the best but as you can see as soon as this news came out about the white house considering a tax incentive so again anything to pump uh the stock markets um we had a, a nice uh, close to the day uh, let's just for fun look at the uh, uh five minute chart here so very nice uh move in the last basically 30 hour to, or one hour yeah about, about an hour hour and a half in the markets uh but there is still this level that we are watching uh let's see if we do create some sort of double uh some sort of double uh top here this might be very interesting to watch and also on the nasdaq as well um and perhaps even the dow jones but again folks these are just setups that we are watching they're not trade recommendations uh the trade is only triggered once we get that uh confirmation of the um market structure and so far we do not have that 
but I think these will be very interesting to watch. Uh, I am watching, as I said, the Japanese yen, and I think this is, might be foretelling of perhaps the markets wanting to pull back if we do create some sort of pattern and break out, because the yen, I see it more as a run into, uh, you know, a risk off, uh, safe haven type play. And oil. I think what we're going to be seeing with oil, again, this could actually be positive for the stock market, though, because, uh, you know, a lot of the banks were forced to basically provide loans to these oil and shale companies. Um, and essentially, yeah, it's just a dirty mess, pretty much, where, you know, these companies need oil to go up because these oil and shale companies are pretty much zombie companies. And these banks would not have lent them the money, uh, but they were forced to, as I said, because of, you know, government fears of uh, layoffs and stuff. Uh, so, you know, banks are very tied and connected. Not all, but some, you know, some are a, a good deal of them are tied and connected to the price of oil. Um, so what oil will do might affect the Canadian dollar, but I'm more interested to see what I'm, uh, what will happen with the yen and if this will mean some sort of uh run as a safe haven into uh the yen because of some sort of fundamental news uh that we hear but uh i just find it funny because you know a lot of people were looking at the market and saying hey what this might be a nice setup for next week but again folks this is why we as i keep repeating we do not take trades blindly we wait for the setup to present itself you know we're not calling tops we're not calling bottoms uh, that's not our job you'll never really catch the top or the bottom at all times our job is just to wait for the uh, pattern to form and then take the trade and keep repeating the patterns but as i said uh this article might have changed a lot about that but you know it's just news let's see what happens uh when we open next week and what type of news uh we get so again folks a really good week this week uh good trades and even on the junior minor side we had some good setups that we were following um and next week looks very exciting as well you know uh the people's bank of china is on wednesday and as i've already said i'm very excited on the yen and oil so i hope to see you all in the chat room and enjoy your long weekends